Welcome back to Fast Market here on the TD Ameritrade Network. Let's bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment. That's going to be Andy Swan, co-founder at Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Andy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we're talking one of your favorite subjects, Andy, <laughs> and that's Tesla. Uh, really good delivery numbers. It seems like the pricing that they've implemented over the last six months has really taken hold as uh, demand remains robust for at least two of their models. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that the writing was on the wall actually about a year ago with Tesla when, um, you know, gas prices were through the roof. I think that's when a lot of people decided that their next car was going to be electric, or at least they would give it serious consideration. And among electric vehicles, really, Tesla is the only player worth talking about at this point. Their lead is so uh, gigantic. Uh, and growing at this point. I think, um, you know, for us at Likefolio, we really watch two things uh, when it comes to Tesla. Of course, we're watching the gas price concerns and electric vehicle um, demand and things like that. But for Tesla specifically, we like to look at uh, the number of people talking about it on social media, um, which is down uh, year over year, 23%. Um, for us, this is actually one of those very rare situations where we think uh, this is actually a good sign because last year what, what was happening was you had a confluence of two things. You had you know, high gas prices and you had the CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, uh, embroiled in this entire drama around buying Twitter, uh, which really distracted, I think, the shareholder base and Wall Street in general. So Tesla was a huge topic of conversation without it really being about the cars. Uh, and so now I think that has changed and most of those mentions are about the cars. And we see that when we look at Tesla web visits, which are up 26% year over year, near all time highs. And what this tells me is that, you know, Tesla at this point is now part of the normal car shopping experience. Um, you know, it's not just this one off kind of weird EV brand luxury that is out there that people don't really think about um, you know when people are starting to look at purchasing cars they're starting online first of all uh, because the dealer lots have disappointed them time and time again and so they start online they end up checking out tesla they see how affordable these cars are uh, and uh, you know this company is set to benefit in a really really big way not just from the ev boom i think that tesla has moved well past that and is just a really iconic, almost luxury brand that now a lot of people can get into for $40,000 or less, which is uh, very impressive the way they've executed on this strategy. You know, Andy, when I look at all the topics that we could talk about when we're looking at Tesla, we could talk about the Cybertruck, we can talk yep. about the Tesla Semi. We can talk about the charging network. We can talk about autonomous driving. We can talk about green energy and energy storage, AI, robotics, the robo-taxi, all these names that we're talking about. And the other side always, always wants to talk about valuation, right? This is, the, you know, yeah. th this stock is overvalued. It's got valuation problems. When, and they also say the, the, the price is coming down, that could be margin problems. But I want your honest opinion. Is the street reading this wrong with the margins? I see Tesla pressing its advantage when it yeah. comes to margins, because he's got room on margins to come down and almost strangle the other EV makers and still make plenty of money. And you see the numbers, you see the deliveries, People see that as desperation from them, lowering the prices. I think he has got a chokehold on these other companies and he's using it, Andy. Yeah, you know, we were on this show with you guys, I think just a few months ago talking about this. And, um, you know, I tried to make the case at that time that this is a strategic move. It's not a move out of desperation. We see it in the data time and time again that Tesla demand for Tesla vehicles is very, very high and growing. It's not a move out of desperation. This is a move, this is a competitive move like you talk about. And I would add to that, that I think what Tesla has that other car manufacturers, forget EVs, other car manufacturers in general ha don't have, is that the more cars that they can sell and build, 
the better and more scalable their operations get. The way that they've set up these factories, these gigafactories, is actually the more they produce, the more efficient they get, the more their costs come down. Um, you know, it's it's an unbelievably scalable operation. And so I think that lowering the price in order to continue to keep demand growth uh, going is exactly what this company should be doing. And like you said, they, they're profitable on every unit that comes out the door right now. And there's more room uh, in that in that per unit profit margin to, to compress even further and bet on themselves. So I think this is well beyond an EV play at this point. This is actually something that I think GM, Ford, Toyota, all auto manufacturers, whether EV or traditional, are starting to become very concerned that Tesla is running away with the overall auto market, and it's a matter of time before that comes to fruition. And Andy, when you when you look at the social media mentions on your one chart, it says it's down a little bit, uh, but they continue to uh, outperform on the delivery side. I think yep. it, they're believed to uh, deliver about 1.8 million cars so far this year. Do they need, Andy, in your opinion, and some of the data that uh, is reflective uh, that out of Lake Folio, do they need more models? Because it seems like the Model S and Model X just don't sell a lot, right? They don't produce a lot. It's all Model yep. Y and Model 3. Do they need new models because, you know what, BMW, Mercedes, Volkswagen, the GM, Ford, they're coming for them with a wider yeah. array of models. Is that going to be uh, something that they can sustain if they just stick with these basic four that they have and then add that truck? Yeah, I think adding the truck will be huge, um, you know, and give them an entirely new, fairly untapped market at this point. Um, I do think that there's room even below the Model 3 in terms of price point. I think they're going to target that. Um, and I think Tesla will have, you know, a, a car out there in the maybe eighteen to $25,000 range that just, you know, could could completely change the the way the company is viewed by consumers more globally i think than in just the united states but yeah you know i tend to agree with you i think um they've done a good job on of focusing on uh the models that they do have they have a nice breadth of uh price points all the way from you know the model x which i think can be 120 130,000 all the way down uh, to the Model 3, which you can get for, for probably under $40,000 right now. The very low price point they're missing. Um, but all in all, you know, people really do like these cars quite a bit. And I think um, they're not going to have to be like a Toyota or a Ford that has to have seven different models and varieties and brands inside of the same uh, price range. The Tesla name so far is coming through as being a high quality product that people really like. And so I think th they're good from that standpoint. Yeah, and Andy, real quick, uh, the stock's up over 125% so far this yeah. year, nine month highs. Uh, I mean, earnings in a couple weeks, are you guys still positive on this even after the run up? Yeah, still po long term, very positive. I think that there's room for this stock to be, you know, as crazy as it sounds, I think this could be a 700 to a $1,000 stock within a few years. I think there's a lot of volatility in between here and there, as we've seen in the past, probably due for a pullback. It seems like a lot of, of the great news is already baked into the cake, but this is one to put on your watch list. And anytime it gets that 20, 25 percent pullback uh, might be worth picking up some shares. Yeah, uh, devaluations coming into play, but strength yeah. of the consumer also uh, will be key here moving into the yeah. latter stages of 2023. All right, Andy, great stuff as always. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you, you too. All right, that's Andy Swan, co-founder at Likefolio, breaking down the data.